Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to Northern Transmissions. Uh, this episode features Jay Tillman, a.k.a. Father John Misty. Um, yeah, I had the chance to talk to him about uh, quite a number of things. I was really excited about it, about it, I should say. And uh, yeah, let's get down to it. First off, I was reading uh, when I was doing the research, I read a bit about your... Uh, your youthful days. You grew up in a bit of a, it seems like you grew up in a bit of a religious household. Uh, and I was just wondering how or uh, what type of music were you able to uh, get your hands on? You know, that, around the time that I was growing up was also kind of the mainstream emergence of uh, what's branded CCM, like contemporary Christian music. And uh, so there was a lot of that around the house. My parents were really into that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was very limited. Um, and But, you know, when you're a kid and whatever, you're not, you're, you're not at the height of your critical thinking uh, uh, skills yet. So whatever, you just enjoy, you know, if, if you discover a love for music at an early age, that kind of supersedes any, like, uh, you know, aesthetic sensibility. Um, and then I guess by the time I hit junior high and high school and stuff, I was really just kind of listening to whatever I could get my hands on at my friends' houses, uh, et cetera. But yeah, it was, yeah, it was, um, generally like, you know, uh, thinly veiled worship music. I think you wanted to be a pastor when you were kind of younger as well. Did you? Would you think this kind of um, had the effect on you that to the front a rock band? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure that there's some that there's some similar impulse. Um, I, I don't really, um, you know, if I had wanted to do that, I certainly would have gone and done it. Um, but I didn't. You know, like that was that, that was like a very I, I forget who I even told that to, but, you know, that that was just like an example of kind of the, you know, some kids want to be, uh, you know, and I'm not even sure that I really wanted to be because, you know, the environment that I grew up in, you didn't choose what you wanted to do for a living. You got called to do something. So there wasn't, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, understand the distinction there and especially with something like being a pastor so like when you're a kid you've got you know these weird ass adults uh around you who are telling you that that god is calling you to do this thing and generally if it's the thing that you want to do the least that's the thing that you are supposed to do the most um, and so that was really, you know, it wasn't like being a kid and being like, I want to be a firefighter, or like, I want to fi fly a jet plane. It was, uh, the conversation was, was like, what is God calling you to do with your life? And, uh, you know, people were telling me that I had, you know, and, and they were, they were intuiting that based on my, like, little, sure, like, that, that I had this, like, little performer streak in me and was constantly talking and, constantly bullshitting and telling jokes and wasn't embarrassed, you know, just like wasn't embarrassed to assert myself or whatever. And so they, you know, the, those kind of character traits, you know, a weird adults pick up on and like, you know, children. Um, so, I mean, that was, that, that was more really the conversation around that kind of thing. Was it a little difficult, uh, like walking away? Because I think they became a little successful when you uh, when you had left the band. Well, no, uh, no. I mean, we. Had, I, I didn't have a unsuccessful day the whole time I was in that band. <laughs> I mean, it was. I I got. I got brought in, by the time I was brought in to play drums, they were already, like, they had recorded, they'd gone on one tour, their albums had come out, the, the album and the EP had come out, and it was all, the writing was kind of on the wall, but it was, you know, like a a, a, a big deal. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, you just have to take my word for it that that kind of, like, uh, you know, cost-benefit analysis uh you know, regarding like success and one's ability to sustain sustain one's level of success, uh, like doesn't that doesn't inform like big creative like 
real creative decisions, you know. I mean, it's it definitely, in some, just the time that I spent doing it, I, I gave a lot of time to it. You know, I was in that, I was in the band for four years or something. And so that, you know, that definitely adds weight to, to the decision. It's different than quitting a band that you've been in for six months or something. Right. Um, but it's really more the time spent doing something thing that adds gravity uh, to that decision. You know, I mean, I've quit, I've quit bands that were, uh, you know, like I remember quitting my first band, uh, the first band that I quit was this thing called Saxon Shore that I did with my friend for three years or something. And that was and when I was, uh, I think I was ages like 19 through 21 or something. And uh, uh, that was, I was like right before I moved to Seattle and at one decision I decided to like, you know, quit and move on to uh, play my own music. And, uh, even though that band was totally unsuccessful. I mean, like, we we used to, like, eat yeast packets to fill our stomachs and book our own tours and play for no one and, you know, all that stuff. And that was just, that was a very hard decision, too, like, uh, just because it, I had really, you know, made, put a real investment of my, like, time and energy and emotions and everything into it. Right, right. Um, but, but sleep, yeah. And not, I mean, I'm not trying to paint myself as like a saint or anything, but you know, the, but the, you know, it's really like the time spent in a band at 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 weight. When I heard the ladies' man was dead, I saw the Rolling Stones stop me. Saw my ancient hero on the sunset strip He left behind a legacy of ruin Now painted ladies wanna hold my gun Wonder if the whole time Where that man 
engage an audience or or engage someone's mind or ask something you know phrase things in a way that are that are interesting and uh that yeah but uh you know I couldn't do that without blowing up everything that I had done before, without completely disassociating with everything I had made before. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it makes a lot of sense, and uh, um, a couple, and I think you were interested also in, a vid- in visually kind of um, translating, I mean, your songs or your ideas, um, like the, I wanted to ask about the, uh, not to get too more darker, but on the website, uh, the folks, the folks, the image of the folks, uh, carrying all those crosses that the image of that can you give me a a small bit of a background on that one um well in all candor that that's uh i didn't design that website um a friend some guy in london did and i think that he you know did his uh you know i think he was attempting to uh exemplify you know kind of the imagery and sensibilities and sensuality in the music. And, uh, I, I mean, I think that there's, uh, if that speaks, okay, if if it speaks to anything, it's that uh, I think that there's, like, a very visible, um, like, kind of funny and uncomfortable juxtaposition of, like, the sacred and the profane and sentimentality and cynicism uh, in the music, like, most of what's interesting about the music or the lyrics or whatever or the aesthetic lies within um, this kind of a, a counterintuitive cross-section uh, at, at the center of, uh, of anything that's kind of interesting about the album, you know, like an uneasy alliance. I hope you're enjoying our conversation with Jay Tillman of Father John Misty. Uh, For more information about the band, uh, such as tour dates and music, you can check out fatherjohnmisty.com or Facebook or the Sub Pop website. For more information about our show, please check out www.northerntransmissions.com or follow us on Twitter at Northern Trans. Let's check out the first single off the 2012 release, Fear Fun. This is the song Hollywood Forever Cemetery Sings.
Hollywood Forever uh, cemetery mm-hmm. things. Uh, you mm-hmm. Aub- Aubrey Plaza got uh, was in that one. Um, how did you? How did the concept come about, and how did uh, she become involved in it? Um, it was interesting. Like um, Aubrey's involvement, kind of, uh, the, or the conceptualization, the, the, the conceptualization of the video, um, kind of happened simultaneously with with Aubrey uh, agreeing to do the video. She, she, I met her at like a party a couple of years ago, and we just kind of you know, see each other around here and there. And she asked me uh, if I could come, like, play a small role in this thing that she was doing, and I couldn't because I was on tour. Uh, but it put the, you know, the idea of, like, working together in that capacity across my mind, and maybe a month later I sent her the song and asked her if she'd be interested in, or I sent her, like, a couple songs. I was like, I'm going to make a music video. Uh, which you'd be, you know, I think you'd be perfect kind of given the tone of the music and everything. And she really, really got, was into that song, the uh, Hollywood Forever tune. And when I talked to her and heard uh, like kind of the way that she was identifying with it, uh, like the, the concept of the video kind of manifested, uh, almost immediately. But, but the van scene was something that I, that I read, like throwing her in the back of the van. That was like the day before, the day before we started shooting. Uh, like that, that idea came to me in like the middle of the day. I had to go like meet up with her and be like, "Are you cool with me throwing you in a van?" <laughs> <laughs> what a sport! What's that? I said, "What a sport she is." Yeah, no, I mean she she really is. Like she's out there. She's um, she's she's like she's one of like uh she's a good actor like she in that she really isn't like interested in like kind of getting out there and doing weird shit you know that's great that's great um and um i wanted to ask you about uh i know you're a fan of philip roth and uh you reference him on uh it's on your bio i think uh, yeah 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 has he um has he influenced periods of your writing Part one of the question, and part two is: Were you aware that he said that uh, he's done with writing fiction? Yeah, I did. I did hear that. I think that makes sense for him. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a di- like. I'm not sure that he influences what I what I do. The mediums are, you know, any inspiration that he might give me in, in like the you know, writing pop songs uh, would just be so vague and kind of generalized. Like, like his, uh, you know, the human stain or something. Like, that's a story about, or, or all, every character is like uh, a unbelievable. Like he, he's one of those authors. I just really get a sense that he that he is in all of those characters, you know, right. And that his, his experience, his experience is at the core and that he recognizes the universality of his experience, et cetera. And, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, and in maybe in that way, that's not an inspiration to me, but something that I, what the reason why I'm into that is because I, that's something that I want to do myself or, or, or like a, an approach to writing that that I also kind of adhere to or or value or something. Um, but yeah, he's he's the shit. Yeah, he's, he's got America's quite cranky. The... He's America's cranky old genius. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's got quite the uh, the, the catalog of uh, material. It's pretty impressive. Thanks for listening to Northern Transmissions. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Jay Tillman. Father John Misty. Uh, if you want more information about the band, you can go to fatherjohnmisty.com. They are also on Facebook or the Sub Pop website. If you like more information about us, you can go to northerntransmissions.com. Follow us on Twitter, Northern Trans. Uh, and a big thank you to Spencer Carson, as usual. And 
Let's close the show out with one more track. This is the song Nancy from now on. Oh, pour me another drink And punch me in the face You can call me Nancy Every man wears a symbol And I know I have mine I've got my right hand stamped in the concentration camp where my organ screams slow down man just a couple states below Oh.